going to introduce Chris Rennie. Chris um, worked with Chris for uh, seems like a very long time. We're we're good friends, and um, he's going to talk today about intelligent document processing and some interesting AI that's around that. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Um, so I'm going to be discussing intelligent document processing. Um, so first, let's define intelligent document processing. Um, and we also call it IDP. So IDP are software solutions that lend the power of AI technologies, such as OCR, which is optical character recognition, or named entity recognizers, uh, NERs, uh, machine learning. And we efficiently process all types of documents extract the rele relevant information, and then feed the output into downstream applications. So that's kind of the definition of intelligent document processing or IDP. Currently on the market, there's a lot of different packages that do this. There's FlexiCapture from a company called Abby. IBM has a product called DataCap. Automation Anywhere has IQBot. UiPath has Document Understanding. And there's many, many more. Um, all of these software products have similar capabilities. Some are easier to work with than others, but in general, they all work the same way. They all require some type of setup to make them work correctly. And this setup can vary significantly depending on the type of data you're extracting, the types of documents you're dealing with, and the confidence level that you need in that data extraction. For this presentation, I'll go through the different types of document structures that we see and give you a feel for how we extract data from those structures and where AI fits into that. The simplest type of document that we see, at least from a data extraction perspective, is called structured documents. From these documents, we need to extract printed or handwritten or even checkbox values. Uh, but everything in a structured document is either at an absolute location on the page or at some relative offset to a known anchor point, like a label. Common examples of structured documents that we see are tax forms or pretty much any kind of uh, government document, licenses, passports, uh, and even handwritten applications where the boxes are defined and you put a letter in each box. What sets a structured document apart from the others is that you always expect that a value like uh, last name in this case will always fall within some distance away from an anchor, anchor point and will be contained within a certain amount of space within that document. To extract data from structured documents, we typically use something called a positional data extractor. At its simplest interpretation, we configure this extractor by locating and defining the anchor points and values. In this example, the anchor point for the phone number is the label outlined in red that says primary phone. Based on the location of this anchor point, we can define where the value for that phone number will be located. When a positional data extractor sees characters in the primary's phone, uh, phone values bounding box, uh, which is marked in blue here, uh, it can assign those characters to the phone number data element. So it's matching the anchor and the value. The next classification of documents that we see are called semi-structured documents. You can think of these as reports where all the data is in a standard order, but because each section may vary in length or even break across pages, we can't really predict where something will be on the page or even what page it's going to be on. Uh, a common example of structured documents that we work with are patient medical records. Sometimes you might use a positional data extractor to pull out some of these fields as long as you can find a good anchor point and you can predict the size of the value box. But you have to be careful here because like in this case, if the value of constitutional symptoms uh, happened to wrap to the next line, a positional data extractor wouldn't be the best choice for that. A more common approach here would be the use of what's called a form or key value data extractor. This extractor uses machine learning model uh, and it's been trained to recognize the relationship between the keys and values within a text document. They work well, they're easy to configure, but they're not foolproof, so they sometimes miss data elements. So if you use a positional extractor, you might get better result results overall. 
It could be also that you need a larger training set for the machine learning model. There are also uh, extractors called table extractors, which are similar to form extractors, but they pull data out of tables. A good example of this would be items on an invoice. These extractors are uh, based on machine learning models also, but instead of being trained on key value pairs, they're trained on tabular data. Finally, there are unstructured documents. With this kind of text, the only assumption we may be able to make is the, the language of the words, hopefully some kind of grammatical structure of the language, and sometimes the domain of the document. So in this case, we're looking at another part of the patient's medical record called the history of present illness. This is a textual description of what's going on with the patient and usually has embedded with it symbols, diagnosis, and in some cases, even negative symptoms. To extract this type of data, we use an extractor that's built in what's called a named entity recognizer, or an NER. NERs are another type of machine learning model that are trained on a large text corpus uh, to recognize specific types of terms or entities. Common NERs that you might find are trained to recognize people's names, places, dates, companies, and even currency values. The one we use for this extractor is trained to recognize medical language. You'll probably notice as we've gone through these different classifications of documents that some documents, like a patient's medical record, may contain structured, semi-structured, and also unstructured sections. Being able to identify these different classifications and then choosing and configuring the best extractor is ultimately what's needed to get the most accurate extraction results. As I said earlier, there are quite a few software products out there that do intelligent document processing. Uh, our consultants at BP3 work with a lot of them. Under the hood, they follow a similar process and they have similar components. And here's a representation of these components and I'll go through them in more detail. The extraction process begins when a document lands in some storage location like a directory. And then most IDPs will pass the document through an optical character recognition engine. Uh, and that's an OCR. OCR are machine vision algorithms that have, been, that have been trained to recognize characters. Depending on the engine, it might have been trained on different fonts, character sets, handwritten text, or even barcodes. Once the characters are identified, that OCR engine groups those characters together into nested sets or, or blocks. These blocks can be words, lines, even paragraphs. The information in the blocks not only contain the identified characters, but also the location of those characters on the page. Once the OCR is complete, these blocks are sent to the various data extractors that have been configured for that document and document type. And the data extractors pull out the specific data elements that are set up in the domain of values that need to be extracted. And then the next step is aggregation and validation. So you might be asking at this point, what, why do we need to aggregate this data? Well, the, the data extractors might have found multiple instances of the same data element, and so we need to figure out what to do with them. Uh, for instance, two extractors might have found uh, two instances of a, a patient's name. So we know at the end of the day, we only want one patient name. So the aggregator will, uh, will select the instance with the highest confidence level. This is different than say the symptoms that we might be extracting where there could be many of them and we wanna return all of them that have a confidence level that's above some pre predefined threshold. And this confidence level occurs at multiple levels. The OCR is done with a confidence level that represents how confident the OCR engine was uh, in recognizing something as text. And the extractors have their own confidence level which represents that the correct value was extracted. In some cases, the extractors won't find all the values that they're looking for. Or maybe the, the confidence levels for an OCR character or extraction fell be below some predetermined level. In this case, the system needs a human to look at the document and validate and correct the data. And this is done in what's called a human loop, which is shown at the end here. A human loop is really just a UI where the, the user is shown a document and is able to validate the results or make corrections. In either case, once the processing is complete, the structured data from the document is stored so that it can be used for automation and downstream applications. 
BP3 consultants work with a lot of these IDP products. One of our favorites, though, is one that we built using Amazon Web Services or AWS. Apart from its scalability, one of the things that we like most about it is that we can extend the basic AWS data extraction capabilities to include functionality that's specific to our customers' automation needs. Using this framework, our consultants are able to configure and deploy robust document processing pipelines that we can scale to, to process hundreds of thousands of documents per day. Now I'm gonna take you behind the scenes uh, and walk you through at a very high level what we do to create a data extraction pipeline for a new document. Using our framework, the, the process our consultants follow is pretty straightforward. Uh, the process starts by the consultant defining the domain of data that needs to be extracted. Typically, she's working with the client to figure out what's important in the document from an automation standpoint and how that data might relate to other data elements that are being extracted. Next, based on those data elements and the types of uh, documents, the, the three types of documents that each document can contain, she selects and configures the appropriate data extractors. And then finally, for basic documents, the consultant deploys the document processing pipeline to AWS. And for more advanced documents um, that may have some anom anomalies uh, or maybe data elements that reside in some domain-specific unstructured text, uh, the consultant may need to create a custom extractor, which is typically written in Python, um, or we might train a machine learning model and create an NER extractor. So to review, intelligent document processing, it's a way to blend AI technologies to efficiently process all types of documents, extract the relevant data from them, and feed the output into downstream applications, typically using automation. And there's a lot of packages out there that do this kind of work. We discussed some of them, uh, but they all follow a similar process and have similar components. And then we also discussed the three basic types of documents, structured, semi-structured and unstructured, and the AI technologies that might be used to extract the data from those documents. And then lastly, we went through a typical workflow that most IDP use to extract data, including a solution using Amazon Web Services.